Fashion trends, political movements, and even wars have inertia and momentum and are incredibly difficult to turn around once they get started. Even the Holocaust is said to have had massive inertia where German soldiers carried out horrible acts of torture and murder and then later could not understand how they could have done such things. So here is my insight and why I think it is important. It seems to me that our minds must interact somehow and form a hidden group mind. This group consciousness is an interacting phenomenon and because of this gains attraction, momentum, and inertia. Sam Keen showed this in his book Faces of the Enemy. And many other examples exist where group thinking has become contagious. Even the Cabbage Patch Kids dolls is an example of the power of the collective. As we work together to bring about peace on Earth and remedy global warming and terrorism and the nuclear threat and the water issues, you can feel the inertia of the situation. Even racism survives because of the interactive nature of thought. Herein lies a major resource for us. If we are going to survive, we need a perpetual shift in identity, relationship, and culture. We are facing the inertia of old thinking. But that same inertia that holds us back is exactly the resource that can lead to the formation of a permanent global community if we can get the mental energy to interact for the common good. Interaction is where the inertia comes from. Interaction is critical and vital and essential and real. But we must consider very seriously what to interact about and what to share and how to share it. So my question is, if we don't know what to do, but we do know, I believe, that thinking and talking and texting and sharing creates the inertial permanence we seek, then how shall we direct this wonderful resource to be a benefit for all life? Perhaps understanding how interacting leads to mental inertia will open the door to answer this question.